Hello, this is Peter again. I believe you're well. I'm here to continue talking about the banking, the menace of joblessness. I hope you had seen or have seen the previous discussion. It's on our YouTube channel. Please take a moment and watch it. I believe it's in there's some information. You can also share your comments, what you think, or your opinion in general. So on the same note today, I thought to talk about uh, the irony behind the same menace. And uh, please pay attention. I'm going to be very brief and take you through what I believe is important for us to pay attention to. So I want to take a tour to the workplace the service industry. So come with me, let me take you through a short uh, flow, chat, through how real we can debunk the irony of joblessness. I know uh, ideally there are jobs, people with jobs, but equally there are places where it's true to say there are there ain't enough jobs. But uh, there's an article which went around and said like that 53 percent of graduates do not even have jobs and that caught me and i thought to give it some very sober attention so we discussed last week about debunking the menace of joblessness and today i thought to highlight some irony in the same so let us take a tour to the workplace the service industries and the job opportunities and this means everybody not some people but everybody now i want to ask you a question let's look at the service industry the job opportunities and at the workplace what exactly what i mean by that even now as we as you listen to me as i speak about this tell me would you have some hobbies services that you may need somebody to serve you, you may need a domestic manager or a house help, you may need a gardener, you might need somebody to clean your house or any other domestic or home based service. Do you have that? No, maybe not. Do you have some property that you may want somebody to develop for you? Don't answer me, but maybe do you have that? Do you have any need for body wellness? You may need to go to the gym, you may need to go to have some sessions with a counselor, just physical or mental well-being, or somebody just to talk to, to feel like, you know, some do it professionally. Now, do you need that? Do you need to go and see your dentist? Do you need to go and see uh, somebody to help you with your needs, body needs? Now, do you have some property that you need servicing. You have a phone that is broken, may need to be repaired, a laptop that is broken, and might be in need of being serviced. Could you have recreational needs? You want to go to a swimming pool so that you have some recreational time. You want to go for some entertainment and you need some service on the same. Now, there are many other services. The list could be so wide, depending on what you need. You might have a dog, you need a dog trainer, you might have a house, you need an interior designer. You come to terms to the fact that do you need any of that? Now, if you do, here, according to this question, I've just taken you through the a tour through the service needs, but at least you, love, you need one or two. Now, that's my question for you. Do you need any of that. Now, if you do, that means your answer is yes. And so, we have jobs, we have work that needs to be done, we have property that needs development, we have homes that need domestic managers, we have phones that need repairing, and so forth. Now, if that is true, then there is some irony in joblessness. Because there are jobs and work that needs to be done, and we can agree to that. Now, if really there is no need, you do not need any of that. If all of us or the majority of us do not at least need one of these, then it's true that there are 
are no jobs. So it's true, they are no jobs. And so I should just keep quiet because the story is there. Now, assuming that time you needed that and you obtained a great solution for what you needed very easily, then I don't have to talk here because that should be the end of the story. I mean, anytime you need this or that, you get it easily and you get it fast and the best solution. Let's go to option two. Now, you obtained that solution, yes, but you really struggled. Think about it. The last time you needed one of these or any of these, any service, whether it's you went to a barber shop, you went to a mechanical shop, you went to a car wash, you went to a dentist, you went to an architect. Did you obtain that solution easily? So I should not talk more. Did you obtain it yet? But you struggled quite to get a service that solved you. You felt software and the job was perfect. Or you struggled. If you struggled, then it's work that needs to be done. That architect needs to improvise his service delivery. That dentist needs to offer better services. If the suit somebody did for you was not done best, you struggle to get that service, then there is work to be done. There are job opportunities. So it's an irony to confuse that joblessness in its entirety is a fact. So if you are told about all that you need, do you have a person who is or rather who developed something for you would you seek to fathom again now the person or the place you went for a gym would you still go there again the person who advertised your service would you still go there again the person who served you repaired your phone or your television would you still go back to them or do you still feel i would want to look for at least in one of the service needs I will need somebody else. I will need a better solution. I will need a more long-lasting solution. That would just mean that the irony still stands, meaning you need service yet. Now, let me take you here between irony and the end of my story. Now, looking at the two case scenarios, from my personal experience and the people I've interacted with, I have always found that people would need, at least all of us, if not majority of us, have the need for something to be done for them. They have something we'd want somebody to come and help them. You are a doctor, you are not a gardener. So you will offer service on one side, you need a service on the other. Even if you are an expert, you are a construction expert, you would still need somebody to make a a, a suit for you, a tailor. That means we can all agree at least on any particular scenario for all of us. We need somebody to serve us on some end. That means if that is true, the probability of needing somebody to help you that you cannot service your car, you cannot uh, make your own suits, you cannot manage your own house, you cannot do everything. That means the probability for you to need somebody to serve you is higher than low so end of story that means if you can serve yourself you don't need anybody to help you your uncle will be your customer your brother will be your hairdresser yourself will be your mechanic like you are a limited version then you can equally say you don't need others to serve you in other disciplines but as long as you have every one of us have the need for somebody to serve them within and be all other be all their abilities then the probability for you needing a service is higher considered to that you don't need that. So I can give it at 70 percent. This I can give it a 30 percent. You can do that percent of your self reliance, but you need 70 percent of others to serve you. So there is work that you need done for you on the higher side of it. Now, let me go to. B1 and sorry, 
A2 and B2. If indeed, yeah, you are served, you are done work for you, but you struggle through that process. If again, you are still looking for a better version of the service you, de you obtain from somebody, it is simply means there is work that is needed. There is an opportunity within you for somebody to come in, fill by serving you. So it's still ironical to claim that in the entirety there is no jobs. So what I would say is that even Roman 2 of A, option A, the irony 2 is higher. There is a high probability that you obtained a service but you struggled and you are still looking for another service provider as compared to I don't want you to answer me, but from my own experience, I can say like 20% of the times I needed a service and I was thoroughly and easily served. But around 80%, I received the service, but I still went through some hassles. I wasn't con uh, convinced or uh, satisfied. I wasn't very impressed at the first. So I struggled a bit. In other cases, even today, I still have the feeling that could I need probably another uh, suit or another tailor service, I may have to look a bit more to see if I can get another service. Well, there are a few cases, 20% where I am contented and I really prefer who I use, like my electrician is the best. So for him, unless it changes, is a win. The 20 percent but other areas you may find yourself this time you try this plumber next time you want to try a better one now if you share the same sentiments at least you can say it this is higher this is lower so the irony query wins and so let me briefly share what i think we should all do to debunk that irony and at least remove or resolve some crisis I believe that we can change it and improve it. We might not resolve it completely. There would always be more people willing to, I mean, a lady and thinking there's no work than the available job, but not as it is painted currently because of the facts I'm trying to highlight here. And you too are called to this. And this is what I want to say to the debunking process of the irony. Now, what I believe strongly and what I want to share today is that one of the issues that need to be addressed is the mindset of about work and service delivery. People only want to come to quickly make money and be. What if people change that? They want to bring solutions. So that the pride of work is based on the solutions I do for you. So when you want me, if I am a mechanic, you want me to come and serve you in your with your car. I do it diligently because I'm more impressed to prove how relevant I am within my skill. Like, I feel bad even when I don't serve you with a solution. And there are a few people like that, but very few. And the majority just want to get the money, be gone. They don't even care whether their service is long lasting or not. If it's a camera, a CCTV solution provider, they just give you some package. They install the, 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 TV, the, the cameras for you, but whether that those cameras will serve you in the long run, really, it's not a worry for them. What if they were more passionate about offering a solution so that they, they are proud? And there are people like that who want to offer a solution to a need before you even pay them, before they query about the money. Of course, it's necessary. Their pride and joy is to offer a tangible solution. So many of us need to have that mindset so that the services we need, the jobs we need, we get solutions that are long lasting. And so we will not have, or we'll have a lesser debate. The irony query will be minified or not even be there. Now, this is another subject. There is a lot of people who you give them work, they are quite not willing to do it. They want the money, if possible, not do anything, or do some shabby, shallow work. And they want to use the most convenient route. So they don't want to get tired. 
for what they are paid for. And that is a bit concerning because it makes us struggle with a lot of people. And so that contributes to the irony. So it's important for people to be, to accept, to work. There are people who rather want to stay idle and not be bothered. Anything beyond what they believe is not like right uh, mindset. Accept to pay the price. When you go to a new service industry or a job opportunity, make sure you respect the establishments others have done. Accept to be told, pay the price. Don't be convenient. You want to start from top. No, go join an established service provider, accept to pay the price, accept to be told until you're in a position where you have paid the price and you don't even need to be told anymore. You require the, the skills. You can only serve or even show others. So the other thing is sometimes, and especially in our culture, people agree to low standards, average, mediocre standards. It is a choice to say, if I design a chair, I'm a carpenter. I have to go to the best standards. If I be a landscaper, I have to offer cases that are unique. You can choose to do things average, but this is a noble quest to all of us that it's important to elevate standards. So that if you, for instance, you offer access control systems, bring intelligent systems, don't just go to the cheap ordinary services, both the client, the consumer, and the service provider. We all need to have better working standards. Within better standards, they bring longer lasting solutions, more admirable solutions, less problems. And so we'll have little to talk about because everybody will be quickly uh, so, uh, served. And so let us improvise our working standards. Let us be willing to pay for better standards. Let us believe in better standards so that we can sustain opportunities and we can create further room because where you want to increase your standards you accept to work it is not automatic and so something else these are inexperienced service providers people who are starting up it is important for them to at least have the willingness to grow to learn and those who are already established let us all be willing to nurture younger skills encourage inspire mentor them and so by so doing we are creating solutions for tomorrow you may have three people experienced you may have another no experienced and that who do not have any knowledge and you need a service sometimes it is important to make the three so that you come up with structures that you train the first one who, who is not knowledgeable the one who is knowledgeable not experienced try to encourage them let them jump from no experience to experience because even any company any individual we all have a future and those experienced people sometimes they also have a lifetime after them there should be continuity and so more work opportunities should be safeguarded by that process this is a process and indeed e-work is committed thoroughly with that is part of the debate that is why we are having this discussion so that we challenge each other on how we can grow the need to research more what you do you don't just be so contented times are changing knowledge is advancing technology is coming on board and so even the resistance like the education system cbcs and countering you know we have to be a little flexible to change in times and so more research more exposure all of us we must pay attention to that need whereby we want to uh, better our skills through research and exposure you know and all that and that way we will be able to create more work opportunities and secure even who will have and uh, serve tomorrow we can improvise now the last of that list that I wanted to share today is social 
health and mental health. You see, this is a sensitive subject, but very true. Sometimes, and I've heard from one person, actually a lot of people, you hire somebody, but before they even offer the service, you have to first nurse problems they have. They want to come and steal from you, they want to come and do like you're doing, they want to come and bring insecurities, issues in the workplace. So it becomes even a distraction. There was a goal why you joined the team you are working at. There's a reason why you chose to go and work in that company. But the moment somebody goes there, they have social problems. They don't have to interact with other people. So you realize this is an issue that is affecting a lot of people. And so you may have a job indeed. I had somebody sharing a crib. He wanted some drivers for his lorries. But the people came for the interview all drunk. Social problems. How many people have you invited for home help services? And they came and they, are, they have these anger issues. You are actually trying to take them through the process of work that you have. But they are quickly uh, angered. They, they are unstable and all that. This, this is not mentioned most of the time. But I indeed think about it. For all these services that we need, you need somebody to develop. But the moment you start questioning your architect about the service they are offering to you, they get upset. They don't know how to be questioned, challenged professionally. People have a lot of social and mental health problems. It is good to be attentive to that. So that if you have a service that you need provided to you, be careful, be aware, be ready to meet that and be sure how to handle it. If you are a service provider, take yourself to a corner, make sure you handle your social issues and mental issues uh, before you go to the workplace. There are people, they're angry in the morning, they take that to the workplace. And this is very, very common. You are going to town, you bought a matatu, and maybe the service provider for the transport was angered by a previous incident. They bring the heat on you. This is too much. Let's pay attention to it and all agree it has contributed to this issue of joblessness. You have a job, but you are scared. You don't want to give because of the former experiences and the kind of people you are meeting. And it's not limited to the social health, it's because of all this, the mindset with the person you want to hire. So there's a lot of jobs. We all agreed and I took us through the needs we have. But ask yourself, why is it that you're always struggling to get a solution? It is because more or less this, among other ills. And so to change and to the bank this irony it is important to see where you come in what you can do at least change comes from each one of us by doing something small so i want to conclude by saying iwak is committed to the process of debunking this menace and also cause you to a positive conversation where we can equally debunk the irony in the same mix now this is quickly how we do it. We outreach people, companies, individuals, anything related to work, forums and team growth occasions, like team buildings. We want to partner and see, we join hands and speak and shout about mentorship. We want to have such positive discussions like I'm doing here. We also go to the field and talk to people. You can follow up our YouTube channel and social media outreach and you see the discussions you also do with experts and people with work out there and therefore the positive discussions will try quicken our thinking as we try to address this and finally we have a proactive platform if you join and you're an expert you join our web application www.ework.co.ke you realize that other than just getting an expert account whereby you showcase what you can do we have other features of the work profile we encourage people with jobs to come and rate you comment about what the experience of you have been we want to keep that positive and proactive mindset so that we can have a positive discussion and try to debunk and at least change something 
So I believe strongly that if you are all committed, at least because whether you are a service provider, you still need a service done for you. So you can't escape it. You like it or not, it will always come to you. You can be the best mechanic, but you'll need a carpenter to help you. So we cannot, anyone cannot escape. You are a service provider in this hand, you are a consumer on the other hand. So it's a responsibility for all. And so you're welcome to even visit our website, for, uh, check on our YouTube channel, you can even subscribe. Let us keep this debate ongoing. Let us point on the issues that we all go through and they affect us, but being silent and ignorant about them may not change anything. So thank you so much for listening to me. I hope the insights have been helpful. It is something you can see and you can be the next person doing it or put it as a point of action. So thank you so much.